you think about what's happened at the University of Manchester with the discovery of, of graphene and its, and its emergence now as it becomes uh, uh, applied in a, in a wider sense. I don't know if colleagues from Nationwide Engineering are, are here uh, today. Uh, good to see you. Uh, for those who don't know, concretine is on, is, it's not just on the way, it's here. Um, graphene added to, to concrete, uh, already showing that uh, can have a 30% a 30 reduction in terms of emissions in, in construction. In essence, graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms. So it's, it's what you would get if you peeled away one layer of a piece of graphite. Graphene is an incredibly exciting material, uh, mainly because of the extraordinary properties that it has. It's very, very strong, it's very lightweight, it is electrically conductive and thermally conductive, and it's an almost impermeable barrier to most materials. We're just starting to see commercial applications of graphene now. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, location. This is Mayfield Depot, which is an old railway station next to Manchester Piccadilly station, now in the process of being redeveloped and is also an event space during its renovation. Concrete accounts for 8% of all global CO2 emissions and as a material is the second most widely used material in the world behind water. So we've got a fundamental problem to solve in terms of reducing embodied carbon with concrete. So this slab that we're stood on here today is very, very special indeed because it was the first use of graphene-enhanced concrete, concretine, in a suspended or uh, mezzanine-type slab in the world. So the benefit of using concretine in an application such as this is that we can significantly reduce CO2. And there's a number of ways that we've managed to achieve that. We've thinned the thickness of the concrete down. We've taken some of the cement out of the concrete, which is responsible for 90% of the CO2 in concrete. In Manchester, we recognise that we need to construct sustainably because of the impact of carbon on our environment globally. It's part of the whole model of, of how we could potentially live in the future. It's totally fitting that we should, as a city, lead and show the way to being carbon net zero for the future prosperity of the city, the people that live here, and our place in the global market. <laughs>